Before you receive your briefing, you need to remember a few critical points. The sea otter's life cycle is divided into four age groups, pups, juveniles, subadults, and adults. Different factors can threaten each age group. A population will decline if the number of deaths is greater than the number of births over a long period of time. The birth rate of the ocean edge population is consistent with the stable population. You will now receive your briefing from Eleanor Sterling. Often, the cause of a species' disappearance isn't obvious. Any number of things could be causing a population to decline. Population models, like the one being used at the Center for Science Seekers, are important tools for scientists because they can help predict the future survival of a species. Often, a population model will point out a threat and a resolution that scientists may not normally be able to come up with based on observations alone. For instance, many populations of sea turtles were slowly disappearing from areas where they had lived for millions of years. For many years, scientists and volunteers made a concentrated effort to protect the sea turtles' nests so that babies could hatch and safely make their way from the beach into the ocean. Years of effort did not pay off. Even though more babies were being born, the sea turtle numbers were still declining, and still no one understood the reason why. Only after creating a computer model of the sea turtle population did the answer become clear. Protecting babies was important, but more important was the protection of the adult female turtles. They were getting caught in shrimp nets and drowning. With fewer female turtles in the population, fewer eggs were being laid. Regulating the use of shrimp nets is helping these turtle populations to recover. To talk more specifically about sea otters, let's go to California and talk with sea otter specialist Tim Tinker about a situation affecting the southern sea otter population in Monterey. When creating a population model of sea otters, you must study every aspect of a sea otter's life cycle and ecosystem. Scientists and volunteers spend thousands of hours observing sea otters eating, sleeping, grooming their fur, interacting and playing with other sea otters, and caring for their young. Because we have tagged some of these otters, we are able to monitor individuals to determine how often they have pups, how long they live, where they feed, what types of prey they eat, and how much they eat. For example, we know that one adult male sea otter can consume over 20 pounds of prey each day. Southern sea otters live almost entirely in the water, only rarely hauling out on land, so our observations are made either from the seashore using telescopes or from boats. Observing these animals can be quite tricky as they move very quickly and can dive for many minutes and then resurface far away. Right now, there are approximately 2,000 southern sea otters living along California's coast, and their numbers are declining. Although we know a number of possible causes, we are still not sure about which factors are most important in leading to this decline. It may even be a combination of factors. Our team is building a population model to try and figure out what is causing the southern sea otters' decline, much like your ocean edge problem. For us to create a realistic model, we spend a lot of time doing field research. Besides carefully monitoring the tagged sea otters to determine feeding rates, birth rates, and survival rates, we also collect sea otter carcasses that wash ashore in order to study how, where, and why they died. Also, we take blood samples from captured sea otters to see if pollution, contamination, or disease has been introduced into the population. By conducting such detailed research and inserting the results into the population model, it may become apparent that one section of the population is being threatened and declining forcing the entire group's numbers to decline. Once our population model is complete, it will give us a better idea of what could be done to stop the southern sea otter's decline. Because the southern sea otter is an endangered species, great care is taken to protect what few animals are left in the wild. Like the sea otters of Ocean Edge, all efforts must be made to keep these southern sea otters alive and healthy for future generations. To find out what is causing the sea otter population of Ocean Edge to decline, I suggest investigating the greatest threats to the subadult population. For the overall survival of the ocean edge group, it's critical these subadult otters grow into adults so they can mate and produce young. Once you can isolate a threat that only affects the specific age group of sea otter, you will be one step closer to completing your mission. Good luck.